Hey guys, Raphael back here with another one. So I got a couple articles here that we're going to go through and we're going to break some stuff down and break it down real good. Right. So I got this article on MSN. All right. So State Lab finds 90 positive COVID-19 test results were false. So let's jump right into this, guys. 90 people who received positive COVID-19 results did not have the virus, according to the State Department of Public Health. The department said the State Public Health Laboratory uncovered a flaw in one of the testing systems it uses to test for SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. And 90 out of 144 People tested between July 15th and July 17th received a false positive COVID test report. Many are nursing home residents. That's big, guys. They said this you can always test and find out if 90 of them came back false positive. Imagine how much more coming back false positive. That should tell you guys that the rate that people are so-called infected is actually wrong. Because if this one just gives you 62% wrong, 90 out of 144, imagine on a larger scale when they're saying 72,000 people came up infected today. Well, it takes two to one week to get your results. So how can so many people become infected in one day? Let's keep going. State officials said the flaw has been reported to the manufacturer and the Federal Food and Drug Administration and the DPH has taken immediate steps to make sure the patients are notified. According to the State Department of Health, the errant testing results were from a widely used laboratory testing platform that the state laboratory laboratory started using on June 15th but isn't every state using these big laboratories and these off testing sites and these random sites Target Walmart all these places so again think about that guys how many of those are coming up false positive let's keep going we have notified the healthcare facilities for everyone who received the false positive test result from our state laboratory acting committee short Commissioner, Commissioner, excuse me, Deidre S. Gifford said in a statement, accurate and timely testing for the novel coronavirus is one of the pillars supporting effective response to the COVID-19 pandemic. She said adjustments have already been made to ensure the accuracy of future test results from this platform. They said all positive results will be further analyzed by multiple laboratory scientists and if indicated, retested using other method. Now, in a previous video I put up, I showed where the CDC retracted almost 33,000 deaths that were supposed from COVID-19. They went one day, I believe it was 67,000, and they dropped to 33,000. How can you subtract that? So those were false positive as well, weren't they? But nobody said anything about that. Now, I'm going to jump into another article. Everything breaks down to each other. Now, this one from MSN again. This is in Sarasota, Florida. If I can get this thing out the way. So in Sarasota, Florida, coronavirus continues to spread quickly across the state. Plus, now on the Sun Coast, although testing has been made more available, many say there are some problems in really getting a handle on how much the virus is in our community. Right. Concerns over test COVID-19 test results, ABC. It has nothing to do with being able to get tested, but instead, the results the quickest turnaround is about 48 hours, 
and the majority of the time can take about a week of finding out if you're infected or not. Now think about that, guys. Again, how can these spikes happen in one day if it takes two days to a week in order to get your results? Another thing to think about, guys. That's how you know the media changes information just to fear monger and get people to be conformed into wearing these masks and thinking this thing is really out there like that when we know it's not. Let's keep going. However, the most recent issue is getting back results that aren't even yours. I've heard about this several times where if people have gone to the hospital, sign up to get tested, they're waiting, 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 they leave and haven't gotten tested, and guess what? Receive a call back that they tested positive without even being tested. I got a call asking for me, and they told me that I had tested positive. I was like, positive for what? Then the lady said, for COVID. And I said, that's impossible. I never got tested, ma'am, Mindy Clark said. Clark had gone to the drive through testing site at a Manatee Rural Health. But before she was able to get swabbed, she left the line because she realized it was for people with symptoms only. I told them they needed to take off, take this off my record, and they, and they said I had to prove it to them that I wasn't positive, Clark said, which makes you come back and take another test that is going to give you a false positive result right back into this perpetual system. People, use your third eye and think about this. She tested negative just two days later and also tested negative for the antibodies. Plus, according to many of our viewers, this hasn't only happened to her. Clark says if she had many others have been incorrectly identified as positive in the state system so easily, how accurate are the numbers that are related that are released daily? And think about that, guys. How accurate are they? They're not, you know, 80% false positive is a big number on this massive scale. All right, let's keep going. This is part of the testing mechanism problem. People are sitting in their cars, sometimes for hours, or standing in line, six feet apart, sometimes for hours. You're registered, though. You're number 15 in line. And you are Jay Wolfson. If Jay Wolfson says he can't wait any longer and he leaves... It will get number 15 and now get Rebecca Fernandez, who is standing behind them. And if she tests positive and then everyone from then on gets the wrong results, there has to be a better way to do this, explained Dr. Jay Wolfson, public health and medicine professor for the University of South Florida. Guys, that's huge. This shows again how faulty this test is. Now, I'm going to jump over to PubMed, right? This was dropped by PubMed where potential false positive rate among the asymptomatic infected individuals in close contact of COVID-19 patients. Now, they say the majority of people are asymptomatic and are carriers. But let's check this out. I'm just going to go to the results. When the infection rate of the close contacts and the sensitivity and, specif and specificity of reported results were taken as the, as the point estimates, the positive predictive value of the active screening was only 19.67%. In contrast, the false positive rate of positive results was 80.33%. That's an 80% false positive rate people again that's insane on this massive scale when we think about the numbers that they're giving us the multivariate probabilistic sensitivity analysis results supported the base case foundings with a 75 percent probability for the false positive rate of positive results over 47 percent wow insane the conclusion, in the close contacts of COVID-19 patients, 
nearly half or even more of the asymptomatic infected individuals reported in the active nucleic acid test screening might be false positive. Family, again, use your third eye and think about that. 80% false positive. Now, I'm going to jump into another one. A study on infectivity of asymptomatic SARS-CoV-2 carriers. Again, I'm just going to go to the results and the conclusion. The median, the median contact time for patients was four days, and that for family members was five days. Cardiovascular disease accounted for 25% among original diseases of patients. <clears throat> so think about it. These asymptomatic people are already sick. Apart from hospital staff, both patients and family members were isolated medically. During the quarantine, seven patients plus one family member appeared new respiratory symptom symptoms, where fever was the most common one. The blood counts in most contacts were within normal range. All CT images showed no sign of COVID-19 infection. Again, all CT images showed no sign of COVID-19 infection. No severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2 infections was detected in 455 contacts by nucleic acid tests. Conclusion. In summary, all 455 contacts were excluded again they were excluded from SARS-CoV-2 infection, and we conclude that the infectivity of some asymptomatic SARS-CoV-2 carriers might be weak. Again, people, this is not spread the way we think it is. We need to dive deep into information and look for the information, not just take everything at face value. Because once we take things at face value, we conform, and now we become the mask wearers. We cannot be that way. We must question everything. The agenda has been rolled out to reset. They're trying to do another reset on us. COVID-2 is a response. I'm sorry. COVID-2 is the trigger. What they're doing now is the response, which is the lockdowns. The shortage of money, which and now is going to be soon the shortage of food. Now we're in going into phase two. Why? And they're going to blame it on the rioting, the protesting. They're going to blame it on the conscious community. Again, guys, please wake up to the information. There's a bunch of us out there spreading it. I wish you guys peace and love, wholeness and happiness. Be safe, guys. And if you are taught how to observe, you cease to observe.